not when you're going to tell me, don't talk to Ben, don't talk to this one, don't talk to that one, when you talk to women who give you money daily and smash my windows, put red paint up my house. Yeah. I think I'm going to talk to who I like. But for some reason, he's made out, he's made it like all of you lot. He's kind of made it look like I am the insecure one, I'm the jealous one, that's why he can't talk to this one or that one. It's not true. It's not true. He's got so many issues and I'm just so glad I recorded all of it. Since January this year, I record him and he knows it. He knows I'm scared of him. He knows I don't trust him. And so I record everything. I caught him out for causing trouble with me and other people. And do you notice as well how like, true to form with a narcissist, but when we're okay, it's like we're everything together. You know what I mean? It's Everything feels like it, it's supposed to feel. But when you argue, or if I'm beating him, or if I'm not, or if he's not worn me down, he struggles to cope, almost like a loss of control or something, I don't know. Because I've been doing really, really well this last couple of weeks, and I've noticed a pattern. The better I do, the worse he starts to be. It's weird. He's definitely a narcissist. You can't even dispute it. And I made the mistake of becoming a reactive abuser. When I told him about reactive abuse, he said he don't believe in it. <laughs> yeah. Reactive abuse is it's a scary thing because you're not a natural born abuser. You're not a bad person, but you become abusive with everything that you take, you know what I mean? Now imagine, I haven't just taken it for two and a half years from Kevin. I've taken it from like many, many, many. <sighs> but every troll, every person that's done something to me, there's been one com common denominator not too far behind every incident and that's him. And that is why I ended up going to a mental hospital because my head, with all the information I had, true information, not maybe, I couldn't accept that as my reality, that for two years somebody has like literally been doing that to me. Somebody has been making me so hated with the goal. The goal was to make me crazy. <laughs> He told me somebody lives up my street and that was a really disgusting fear tactic to stop me going out my house and it didn't and when I used to walk up the co-op six o'clock at night oh no 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 babes you can't you can't it's too dangerous I used to work at that co-op till 11 o'clock at night and walk home all of a sudden it was too dangerous for me to walk up my little shop at 6pm. <laughs> but I'm on to it all now. There is nobody living up my street waiting to do something to me. And that's what I'm going to start at the beginning and I'm going to do it as loudly as I can. And then maybe other people can help me put some pieces together. But this isn't just like before. This isn't just like a sad little breakup. It's... This one messed me up and I'm not going to let it mess me up again. He told me a lot of lies about Sky. Jimmy Grimble, I see you. I was just talking about you. I'm trying not to... Not try not to take anything out on you, and it's not you as it as somebody called Jimmy Grimble. It's not you, but I can't get it out of my gut that you're scatty. I'm sorry, I can't. 
can't get it out of my head because you're anonymous and you do have the right to remain anonymous. Of course you do, but I don't trust. I don't. And that's not personal to you. That's what he created. I can't trust nobody. I have one friend left, one person who I talked to in my whole life. And I even doubt him sometimes. It's hard. What do I have to do to prove I'm not? I don't know. You shouldn't have to. I don't know. Because I recognise when, like, something... I'm feeling something and I shouldn't. Like, yeah, maybe it's, you know, seeing somebody gift Kevin when he's putting me through hell. Of course, it's going to hurt, but I don't think that's a reason that I can say don't gift him. That would make me a troll. That would make me restricting, like, what they did to him. But that bit I can control, but it's then not... And I don't understand it either, I guess, because I don't battle, I don't get gifted, I don't do all of that. And so I've always struggled to understand when somebody comes and gifts big to somebody who's not doing anything, I get suspicious, you know. <laughs> well... I wished it didn't have to be this way. I did ask him to do it the right way, do it properly, but he can't, so. But like I say, go and um, everybody make sure you ask him what did Tanya message you. You shouldn't put half a story out there, that's dangerous. And look at his moderators, right? Let me tell you the reason I have an issue with these moderators. Um, not like as in personal. I don't know them. I've never spoke to them. Emma. Is it Emma? Has he got a moderator called Emma? I think so. Adele. There's another one. Can't think of her name. Now, the thing is, what doesn't add up to me, right, is when me and Kevin argue or fall out, they don't message me and say, are you okay? And to me, that's a huge red flag because the moderators he had who did troll me, who were involved in having my window smashed, they never used to, and I never knew why. And I'd say to Kevin, how come you've got this whole group of women moderating you, gifting you every day, but none of them ever say hello to me, none of them have an interest in who your girlfriend is so how can you support and watch somebody all day and night and not have no interest in their girlfriend but anyway it turned out that's because kevin was apparently telling them all that i was abusing him and this was right at the beginning of our relationship and this is why i got trolled so hard but then i got too nosy and he didn't like that i started using my brain and getting nosy and I said I want to go in your group chats that you're in these moderated group chats and I got chatting with these women and they started to recognize well wait a minute she seems all right she sounds all right I am all right <laughs> look how Kevin can sit there with a um, court assassin tonight, acting like he's matchmaking her and Brett, with her child sat there, her, her six-year-old daughter sat there on the battle, on the live, and him recognising, oh, you know, well, Brett and your daughter get on, so, you know, what's the problem? What you lot don't know, that's just a normal conversation for you lot. If I have to be unfortunate enough to see that, it breaks my heart because my life got destroyed with my five-year-old granddaughter. That's how calculating, callous, thoughtless and selfish he is. 
I'm going to stop there with that one because that's going to make me too upset and I'm, I don't want to be on social media upset. It's not a good way. I, I learned my man him from talking and he had kept me and him from talking for a reason. <laughs> Kevin told his dad and his brother how bad I am and this and that and they never liked me based on things Kevin had told them. Paul told me that himself. He said to me, um, the reason my dad doesn't want you to come to our house is because he doesn't want you bringing Kevin back into the family, something like that. Doesn't want you bringing the family back together. And his dad doesn't want something getting out on TikTok. <laughs> I was really broken that night and uh, Kevin couldn't really be bothered with me and Paul stayed on the phone with me. When I woke up in the morning, Paul was still there on the phone. Told me all this stuff about his own brother. But Kevin will send me loopy so that I'm distracted and we just go on to the next trauma. How have people found your address? I wished I knew. They knew it within two days of Kevin coming here. Kevin says it's Pulley. Pulley stole his phone, gave it to Dave Durans, and either one of them leaked all my stuff and ruined my life. There's just too many stories about that one. But all I know is in that two and a half years, they all went on to live their life, carry on with their social media, make their money. I didn't. Lost my career. I lost my car. Ended up in a mental hospital. But you know what? No one on TikTok, you won't see it on the For You page because I'm not worth anything. I don't battle. I don't aim for the rankings. I don't come with clout. So all these people, you sit there and they want to act like, oh, Pearl's racist. This one's that. They'll only talk about the ones that bring them clout. So all as bad as each other, really, eh? <laughs> Why am I on here doing this? Quite clearly for clout, quite deservingly for clout. I've been quiet for two and a half years. I've been trolled. I get told, why did you call Kevin a hebophile? I didn't. Why did you call Kevin a pedophile? I didn't. Kevin knows I didn't. I've given Kevin the 100% facts of that I didn't. But he wants people out there to think that I did so that they think he's abused by me. Like MC Grinder, literally commenting on a video, yes, I did call Kevin a paedophile and a hebophile. I mean, that's one of Kevin's gifters. So do you see what I'm up against? My life has been terrifying around Kevin and his gifters and his moderators and his supporters. One moderator offered him 50 grand and I bet up for him, didn't I? So is there revenge there? Probably. People that like money and all that, that's what they do and I cost him 50 grand and good, I'll do it again. <laughs> and I told him, my children don't like him. It weren't that I was telling him my children don't like him, I was about to tell him why and I started the sentence and I was like, my children don't like you and he didn't let me finish and he went good. This is why I've turned, because you're going to push me, you're going to push me, you're going to push me. But all of this, and you're going to disrespect my children. Knowing that we, as a family, are going through something right now. But you're going to do that to us anyway. What a man. But Simon, Simon hit me in the head in my own house walking home from the shop calling me a paedophile because you're a paedophile and the girlfriend of a paedophile so he hit me you've never been hit Kevin funny that isn't it the things that have happened to me haven't happened to you the actual main target and you know why because that's not what trolls are interested in they want to throw flour at you an egg at a door and you go ballistic and call the police what about when I went outside my front door to smoke? A man was stood there at the end of the, my driveway with his phone. Turns out to be Vendetta, a man who has been 
obsessed with me for two years. You didn't care. When I find out who Clarice Starlin is, for some reason you haven't even asked me what's her name. And usually you're right into all of that. People have been telling me that you talk to Socks. So we got the most vile people there, haven't we, really? Socks, Clarice Starlin. Vendetta. But the only one you ever wanted to talk about was Mus. And you weren't no goddamn victim of Mark, was you? Not really. You blamed Mark for everything, didn't you? Knowing that there were more, knowing that there was your ex, Vendetta, Clarice Starlin. You knew all these people were there doing what they were doing. But I think Mark's the only one you wasn't scared of. That's what I now think. You lied about the court as well, didn't you? I didn't go to court with him for obvious reasons. One, it's an embarrassment. Two, no thanks. And when he finished, his solicitor comes on the phone to me and he wanted to talk to me first to basically say, like, look, look after him. It was a really tough ordeal, da da da. Kevin comes on the phone, I asked him what happened, and he said he had a breakdown in the court. He just started, like, going backwards and forwards or something, making all these, like, crazy crying noises. <clears throat> and I said to him, nah, you're lying. And he went, no, no, I did, I just had a complete panic attack. I said, no, you faked it, didn't you? And he went, no, babes, I didn't, I didn't. I said, you did, didn't you? And he went, all right, with some of it. I lost a lot of respect. I've lost a lot of trust. And I spoke to a lot of people, including Clarice Starlin, including Zippy. And I intend to speak to a lot more. Was he not in custody for the two days because you reported him for stalking and harassment? Yes, and I provided evidence of that. Right, so, I mean, and I don't it know what was, else saying, but that's, that's what I know. Yeah, it was stalking and harassment with fear of violence because he was using people to threaten me. Right, and so I, obviously I'm not having an opinion whether that's true or not, but that is the reason yeah. he was arrested in custody. That is the real reason he was arrested and kept in over weekend and had the emergency court hearing on the bank holiday Monday. Right, yeah, correct, yes. Um, I don't know really though, I don't really want to talk about that side of things because it's, I don't know what's going on with police and that and what you can talk yeah. about. Uh, well, I can, t I can talk about it because it was dropped, but it was dropped because CPS had asked the Met to send over every bit of evidence that's on my devices. So do you have, because like obviously my impression of you is like you're not a nice guy and you're terrorising us both. Let me, now we're here talking. Mm -hmm. Do you have 100% factual evidence Kevin has done things to you? Yes. So that will all eventually come out, yeah? It will eventually if the Met Police do their job properly. Yeah, which, oh, God, good luck. Yeah. Uh, you've got less chance. So when we spoke to Met Police, um, I asked them, how come nothing ever gets done? It's Hampshire, isn't it? Hampshire Police. Yeah. How come when we make reports uh, to Hampshire Police about stuff, nothing gets done, but when you lot make reports this end, it does? No. Apparently, um, Met Police are too busy. That's why everyone gets away with everything. But in Hampshire, they're not quite... No, is it the other, no, the other way around, sorry. In Hampshire, they're very, very busy. You've got quite a lot of stalkers up there by the sounds of it. And so they, don't, they simply just don't have the time, to be fair, which is wrong, but... Yeah, that's what I said. If you know Hampshire, the rest of me, they took my devices. Kev's happily mentioned it multiple times. I've still got my devices. All I have is like a Nokia, an old school Nokia that I'm using till I get my devices back. Um, obviously, it does cause issues with all the offences with the Met because, like I said, all the evidence is on there. So there's been a lot of communication between both the Met and Hampshire, which is why my devices are still being held because there's quite a bit that's been going on with two years worth of issues so is there stuff i don't even know because to my knowledge he hasn't really done anything so how naive am i being here <laughs> um probably pretty naive because he has done a lot 
Does he instigate, does he gaslight you to trigger you to do something to me? Because I think this is what's happening. Oh, sorry, yeah. yeah he, do, he does at times, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I think that the fact that we're here and we're talking, Kevin, is this enough for you to know that we're not going back? I'm out this time. I've been I've been on medication since February. Mm. I see everything like open glass now. There's no going back. Mm. What you've done has been severely dangerous to a lot of people, their mental health, their safety in their homes. And enough is enough. So I'm don't take offense here, Mark. I'm not no. looking to be besties with these people, Kevin, no. before you want to go and make my life hell. I'm here for the truth. Nothing more, nothing less. The truth. So Kevin, you can take this as dangerous as you want. But ultimately, you are the common denominator behind all these people. And without you there, they wouldn't be there. Simple. So I believe his social media presence at this point is actually causing danger. A man supposedly has been beaten up, which I don't believe, but that's the claim he's putting out. My granddaughter could have been severely hurt or killed. My daughter, enough is enough with this guy. Well, it's like I said, I always get the blame for everything, but he'll never mention my name because he knows mm -hmm. not to mention my name because if he does, then that actually has got the proof of him indirectly referencing me. Yeah. So with regards to me and him, obviously you're not the only troll, you know. Everyone gets trolled. There are many more. Whenever I phone him and I say someone's just threatened to RAP my granddaughter, well, that's Mark. Then I'll say someone just said this. That's Mark. Who's them people in your life, Kevin? That's Mark. And I've got a recording, Mark, where he, he's done my heading with you. He has been so obsessed with you behind closed doors with me that I scream at him. I have lashed out at him. Shut up about Mark. Shut up about Mark. And he has terrorized me with you. He is obsessed. And I can't deal with it anymore. And then a couple of days ago, he messaged me and he said, well, now I know the real reason you didn't bother putting a statement in about Mark. There is no real reason. The real reason is just that I weren't prepared to go all the way to Hampshire to do it. Simple. That's too dangerous and stressful. I can't travel with Kevin. Can you imagine me coming to your area with Kevin? What risk would that put me in? Yeah. Well, By that, I mean just of a camera. You know how I am about a camera. I'm not talking weapons being beaten up. I'm terrified of a camera. So why would I go outside with Kevin? to travel to your area to report you. It was the hardest thing anyone asked me to do. And now we've broken up. He's making out it's because he's so nasty. He's just absolutely nasty. Um, I've got a lot I can post, but like I say, my phone memory is so full. This phone is a nightmare to deal with it. Yeah. Getting things like moved over, then uploading it and something. The way he reacts is different. He will become angry rather than hurt it definitely goes to anger but he goes to like a revenge and a panic so i don't know let's just say something like a man calls me right now he sees and so it triggers him he's gonna go away he's gonna go on tiktok so he's now gonna be hurt and he's gonna be angry so you're gonna see like this aggressive side of him or whatever but then he'll do something to shame me or portray me in a certain way like a revenge and then he'll have to add a lie into that it all starts to escalate so he'll have to add a lie into it in case i now get hurt and lash out and tell you something and, and then the whole thing escalates and that's how kevin deals with emotion but he doesn't have any empathy he doesn't have empathy. Now, you can see that by not only how he's responded to everything that's happened to me, but you can also see that by even, say, this Jimmy Grimble stuff. He believes it's real, right? You've got to remember what he believes. We, Us and him aren't the same. He believes it's all real. He's done a sympathy video for the guy who he believes has 28 stitches and a broken arm, yet he's still dancing and carrying on ready for the next victim. Because in his mind, he believes it and he knows, wow, that's disgusting. Why would you do that? But he, he doesn't have the emotion to feel for that person. And this is another reason I stayed with him, because I'm not going to punish him for something that's not his fault. Having no empathy is not his fault. However, you can't let somebody like that kill you, you know. 
I need a really good damn psychologist. These people like socks. They're, they're absolute evil. How many people has she potentially had to take their life dealing with them if she is really a psychologist? Well, she's going to be a locked up one. <laughs> I'll make sure of that. Just like Kevin wants Vegas Brit, I want socks. But we was only allowed to work on Vegas Brit. We, was, we never talked about socks. Me and Kevin don't talk about socks. Crazy, isn't it? All the vile stuff that she does. But we don't whinge about her. Mark Cock, uh, Vegas Brit, Vegas Brit, Vegas Brit, Vegas Brit. Till the end, I have to say, will you shut up about Vegas Brit? <laughs> Back to comments. I will try and figure this out later. The way he, the way he absolutely fine should tell you all you need to know. I hope you find strength to know your worth. Thank you. His attitude stinks. And you're like, all right, we've done that, done that. Kevin doesn't know how to show emotion. You will never be his first priority. You need to totally walk away from him. Yep. His family dynamics are awful. Yep. He is too obsessed with the app and money and fame to love anyone. You need to be strong enough to walk away. Thousands of people ain't trolls. You need people to start trusting you. He's alienating you from everyone. I'm amazed you stayed with him so long. You deserve a medal. <laughs> no, I don't want it as a chain like his. <sighs> I might get off. I might come on tonight, just like, just a chilled one, though, like sit here and watch telly or something if anyone wants to hang out and whatever. But I will figure out how to put the comments on before that, though. Because I'm struggling to uh, read the messages. I need to look for my glasses. <sighs> Anyway, cool. Thanks for listening. Um, I'm sure Kevin's live now. You can go straight over to him and see him dancing in the sea, I expect. <laughs> Crazier till I sat in that mental hospital and I threw my phone at the wall because you would not leave me alone. Right? Because you'd done all of this and I was starting to work it out, wasn't I? Your ex-moderators, gifters, supporters, they were starting to tell me stuff. So I left that mental hospital, didn't I, Kevin? So that I could be safe at home. But I wasn't safe, was I? Not for another few weeks. I wasn't safe yet because I didn't have any medication. I had left a mental hospital and I had to get through it on my own. And I did, didn't I, Kevin? I went to my mental appoint health appointments on my own, didn't I? And I got my medication, and they kept messing it up. CB was there for me throughout it all. The guy that you tell me the ultimatum, it's him or you. What did I tell you? Him. Him, him, him. Didn't I? I told you it'll be him all day long. It'll never be you. You will never give me an ultimatum over anyone and you because you did all of this with your moderators. Me. I've got a video of you inciting hate on me. We've got plenty of videos of mental abuse. That picture I got sent last night is enough. It's enough for me. You've abused me this long and got away with it. That's all right. But that picture was enough for me. <laughs> wow. 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 And he's he's so calm. He's really, really calm. He's even my friend. We've got a mutual friend together. Even my friend is like, nah, he's weirdly calm. <laughs> I got too much evidence on you now, Kevin. Thank you, Jimmy Grimble. Kai Hills, whatever your name is. I checked out Lancashire Competition's website because I'm not an idiot. Because the thing is, yeah, a lot of people like to judge Kevin's girlfriend because it's always a lot of newcomers, right? And they like to judge and they probably think I'm as thick as he is. I look quite thick. I sound a bit thick. But I'm actually not really. And I researched the website and I told Kevin I researched it. So how can you define a dodgy competition website? First of all, you look at the people, the, the winners on it.
If they don't give a full name and a place of where they live, they're not real. Now, on this competition website, none of their winners, they've all just got first names. When you enter a competition, you either agree or you disagree to share your information. If you agree to share your information, it would say your full name, Tanya Cummins from London. There's don't, right? So every single winner on there is fake. They do not have a landline contact number, only a mobile phone number, which you'll find in their terms and conditions. I read their terms and conditions word for word. They are written like a kid wrote it. The grammar isn't great. Now, the catch is when you enter, because a lot of people don't read terms and conditions and it's at the bottom. So let me help you out with scams like this. OK, when people when you enter their competition, you pay for however many entries you want. You have to give them, obviously, your name, your address, your details. If you don't agree to have those details shared with a third party, you will lose your right to entry and you will lose your refund. It says it in their terms and conditions. So basically, they want to sell your personal information. They want to sell your data. If you refuse that, you lose. So if you put on quite a bit of money for one of their competitions, you lose. <laughs> Please don't fall for it, OK? I messaged Kevin to tell Kevin, you need to stop talking about that company. I'm telling you, I've researched it. It is not. Sorry, right? A couple of weeks ago, Kevin comes to me and he tells me somebody wants to pay for a flight for me to go abroad and stay in a villa. And I'm like, oh, here we go again. Didn't mention much of it until nearer the time. And then he was going on about it. So I said to him, all right, a video call the guy. I want to speak to the guy. Not for those of you that don't know, I'm not a controlling girlfriend. Kevin gets so much hate and trolling. I'm a risk assessor, let's say. The guy refused to be video called. We don't know. We didn't know who his name is. We didn't know who he was. Nothing at all. He did call and I went, oh, hiya. And he wasn't very friendly. You know, he wasn't, oh, hello. Nothing like that. Uh, it's Jimmy Grimble. Nothing to do with Papa Grey, to my knowledge. Um, where was I? I keep forgetting today. My head is so overloaded. <laughs> um, yeah, so... He didn't seem like over friendly. So I said to him, why Why would you just want to pay for Kevin to go somewhere and stay in a villa? Like, what's your intention? Are you wanting to troll him? And he was like, no, I am literally just want to do a nice thing. Um, I just want to do a kind thing. So I said, OK, well, if you're genuine, you'd send me some ID. I want to know who you are. If Kevin is to go abroad with... Um, strangers he needs to tell somebody who he's with he can't just leave the country and be with strangers so he sent me his driving license but he scribbled out his address um so i had his name and his face so at that point i said to kevin no i mean yeah it sounds all pretty honest to me he wouldn't have sent that would he um so that was that and then Kevin decided, he said to the guy of his own accord, nothing to do with me, he said to the guy, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to stay in the villa because I have a girlfriend. And I was actually really impressed with him for just saying that off his own back, you know, because it's true, it's correct, it's not appropriate. And the guy was really trying to convince him it would be OK. And he was like, oh, no, it'll be all right. It's just family. It's just a like this, like that. And he, But he was, like, quite pushy. And I said to Kevin, do you not think it's weird? He's booked you a flight, but he didn't even ask you when. You're free to go. He just went ahead and booked it. And he's really pushy about you staying at the villa when Kevin said he'd pay, uh, save and pay for a hotel and just have the flight off the guy. The guy insisted that Kevin should stay in the villa. Um... I then, being me, said, no, that doesn't add up to me. And why, if it's couples there, if it's like that, why was Kevin and his girlfriend not invited? So that gave me a red flag straight away, something like that. You know, I have no issues with Kevin traveling. He likes to go to the beaches. He wants to do his singing and his dancing on the beaches. I have no issue with that. And that's where he was meant to be going. And I said to him, please don't put us all through this stress and this worry going off with strangers. Just save up and go somewhere for the weekend yourself. A friend even offered him um, something to go to Germany, uh, 
uh, Greece. But he decided, you know, the billionaire lifestyle, it got him. Well, it really did get him because they set him up. Because why else did they take that picture? That picture was clearly set up and it was posted on their Facebook. And yeah, I went nuts. I went absolutely nuts to see this man stood behind two pretty much naked men and a toddler. Yeah, I went nuts. And that woman wants to make a video saying I abused Kevin last night. It was a picture of two men, one in a mankini with his bits hanging out pretty much. And the other one in front of him with his shorts down and his ass hanging out and a two year old toddler and Kevin behind them. All of them are in it. And I got sent that last night. Yeah. And it threw me. Yeah, it really threw me. So I phoned him and I raged and I raged and I raged. And now they want to blackmail me and tell me, take all the posts down. Otherwise, this woman's going to keep her post up saying I abuse Kevin. Kevin, I'm going to...